Good evening, good day, and welcome to another episode of the Broad Points Podcast. It's me, your host, the broad that points, the broad with the points. I am Tyler the Lady. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode. Thank you for listening to the previous episodes. I have received some feedback, some general comments of people incorporating an attitude of gratitude in their practices, whether that be daily, weekly, or just honestly, whenever the heck they notice the clock. It's great to hear. It's wonderful to know that the little bits of positivity out there They're reaching people. They're reaching you. So thank you. And let's get this show on the road. Am I right? Every week is a great week to be thankful. And this week, I am thankful for so many things. I truly cannot say how many times in my life I thought to myself, wow, I will never see that happen, or I will never see that band, or I will never see that performance. And in the back of my mind, in my subconscious mind, I've thought, ooh, I would really love to see that show. It would be so cool if I could see that performance, if I could see that band. And I think not losing hope is a really big part of living. I think we have to maintain hope in order to keep us moving. And it doesn't have to be a faith in anything particular. It just has to exist. And... I'm thinking of several bands that since I've moved to Palm Desert, I have had the opportunity to see most of them are like from the 90s, which the 90s, I feel like were just yesterday. Time is so funny like that. I mean, the fact that time to me right now, it feels like it's going really quick, but I remember being my niece's age. Uh, My niece is six right now. And for her, at that age, life lasts forever. I remember the days going so much longer, but I remember the Harry Potter movies being released. This is like a very great time reference for me here, because when Harry Potter first started being released... There was so much time in between the movies. You had to wait for the movie to come out in theaters. Then once it was in theaters, you had to wait for them to convert it to DVD or VHS. (laughs) And then from there... You know, we would wait. I would see the signs on on the Hollywood video or on the blockbuster saying next week or next month. And those days felt like they went on a lifetime versus now. I mean, these days are flying by for me. I don't know about anybody else, but I... I'm trying to be more intentional with the time that I have. And, you know, that is actually really a big part of why I started this podcast. You know, I wanted to be intentional with my time. I wanted to leave something behind. And alas, here we are. So let's jump in to today's fundamental phrase, shall we? 
as always, a fundamental phrase. It's an approach. It's an approach to life. It's an approach to perception. Try it on. See if you like it. If you don't, there's no hard feelings. It is. Each of us are greater and wiser than we appear. Each of us are greater and wiser than we appear. And I mentioned it last episode of, you know, you can't judge a book by its cover. And that's for the external, right? The external side of this. Don't judge a book by a cover. If you see somebody out in the world and you begin to think, oh, I noticed this, they can't, or they can, check yourself. We don't know what people are capable of. Stephen Hawking's was in a wheelchair, you know? We can't discredit physical things. We can't discredit based off of our judgments. And this is something that is so funny. My niece the other day, my sister sent me a video of her. And she was trying to say the word alopecia. The word she was saying was alodicia. And it was absolutely hysterical. But what she said was that alodicia, alopecia, is when people lose their hair and we don't make fun of them. And it was so interesting to me that she put those two things together in a sentence as the description. And although the qualifier is there, don't make fun of them, I think in general, we should just not be making fun of people. We should be treating people like they're normal. Because in the times when I have felt out of sorts, out of place, maybe not even prepared for what I was going to do, It definitely didn't help me having people tell me that that's what it looked like. So by allowing the space, the compassion, the empathy for other people, it allows us to see not only what they're truly capable of, But what we're truly capable of, yay, I love it when that happens. And again, approach, it's all different. It's all different for everybody. And a prime example of this is pull-ups. Now, my whole life, I have told myself that I could not do a pull-up that I had no upper body strength, that I was weak, that I had noodle arms. The list could go on and on and on and on and on and on and on. But honestly, I can't even remember all of the insults that I gave myself. That's how many there were. And then one day I decided, I'm going to do a pull up. Why? Because everybody can do a pull up. We just have to believe that we can do a pull-up. That is literally the first step. All of the successful people in our lives, all of the role models that we look up to, the first thing that they did to get where they are today is believe. They believed in themselves They believed in the idea that they could achieve more. And my boyfriend is a personal trainer, nutrition coach, wonderful guy, very intelligent, knows a lot of stuff about the human body. And we have very different approaches to pull-ups. When he does a pull-up, or when he first started doing pull-ups, and I do believe it's still now, even to this day, there's a lot of aggression that goes into pull-ups. And I remember as I was training to do my first pull-up 
completely like not what anybody at a gym would be telling you to do. I was literally hinging from my hips and putting my hands on top of counters. And while my back was parallel to the floor, I would use just my shoulders to move myself towards the counter. So we're doing that that pull-up motion just on the counter, parallel with the floor. So doing that motion over and over again, it was very relaxing. It like honestly just stretched out my back. It was so chill. My boyfriend then tells me that in order to do my first pull-up, I need to listen to some hardcore music and just get ready to pull as hard as I can. And yes, that is one way to do a pull-up. But that way, it actually didn't work for me. The way that worked for me was actually relaxing into it. So we would have these pull-up handles in our backyard at the old house we were staying at. And I would hold them and I would just breathe calmly in and then... As I was breathing out, I would slowly start to just pull my shoulder blades back. And it was almost like I was levitating above the ground. And I would get there. And like right at the very end, I had to use just a little bit more just to pull myself all the way up. But it was not aggressive. It, I was not listening to any hardcore music. I don't even remember if I was listening to music at all. What I do remember is the motion of going up and almost feeling weightless. I remember, like I said, it felt like I was levitating. And as I got up to the top, that was when I had to use that little bit of energy, use that little bit of force just to get that last little pop, that last little inch to get me to the top. But I did it. And I did it my way. I did it my way. And the thing about that is it was just what I believed. It just started with what I believed. What do you believe? What do you value? And how well are those beliefs and those values serving you? We choose what we believe. We choose what and who we believe in. And at the end of the day, you're the only person who's going to be in your corner 100% of the time. You're there. You're there when you go to sleep at night. You're the one who tucks yourself in and cuddles yourself to sleep. It's always you. Why not choose to believe in yourself? I know once I chose to start believing in myself, I was able to go through all of these trials and tribulations. And instead of seeing errors, I see lessons. And lessons lead to growth. And once we start to grow, we're able to establish our routines We're able to develop that level of predictability that our bodies appreciate, that our minds appreciate. We're able to find comfort in ourselves. We're able to find our own peace. And we're able to establish and truly thrive in our own authenticity. And it all just starts with believing. Now, I know that on the other side is fear, right? Think about how many times you've wanted to do something and fear has challenged you and prevented you. And it has. It has. I mean, it has for me. I'm human. We're human. Fear 
is a natural emotion. It is a part of us. Like any emotion, though, it is temporary. And much like a fine cheese, it pairs well with courage. Fear pairs well with courage. Courage pairs well with fear. Because the truth is, courage can't exist without fear. That means that we have to be afraid sometimes. I'm not promoting living a life of fear, living a life of scarcity. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Please don't hide away in your house and never leave again because courage pairs well with fear. You get to be courageous. You get to insert your bravery into the challenges that you accept yourself. And by doing so, by allowing ourselves to one, be challenged, to accept a challenge, we're telling ourselves that we can overcome. We can make it through. Even if it's as short as a dance class. I've told you before that I started doing dance class. I'm still doing dance class. I go weekly. I go weekly on Tuesdays, weekly on Thursdays. And if I can on a Sunday, I am happy to go because I really do love to dance. I believe that when we leave our minds to enter our bodies, we really are just allowing a freedom We're allowing ourselves to be able to let loose and shake it off, as our good friend Taylor Swift says. We just have to show up. And it can be hard to show up sometimes. But no matter what the little voices in your head are telling you, you have to believe that you can do it. Remember that inner voice in our head, that, that gremlin, as, as we call it in coaching, they are there to protect you. They are there to, to question you and say, are you sure you want to do this? You just have to believe in yourself to be able to tell them, yeah, I got this one. And there was a quote that I read by Audre Lorde that it speaks to authenticity. And I think it's, it's just really important. So I wanted to share it with you. And it says, if I didn't define myself for myself, I would be crunched into other people's fantasies for me and eaten alive. And that is so true. If we don't define ourselves for ourselves, we are put into a box. We are just the cover of a book. Because we're not choosing to find our depth. To lean in to whatever it is that makes us tick. That makes us us. And so, what do you believe? What do you value? And how well are they serving you? (laughs) Lean into your authenticity. If it makes you happy, have it. Be there. Be with yourself. Believe in yourself. Because once you do, the possibilities are endless. Your path, it's unpaved. You can go anywhere. You can be anything. And that is one thing that I'm very grateful to my parents is they always told me that I could do anything that I wanted. And so I'll continue to tell you. 
You can do anything you set your mind to. You can do anything that you believe in. You just have to believe. With that, we'll go ahead and wrap it up. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you have a beautiful Mindfulness Monday. And you can follow me on all the social media, not in real life, only on social media, at Tyler the Lady, at Broadpoints. And if you do want to send an email, you absolutely can do that. Broadpoints Podcast at gmail.com. And now one more time with that fundamental phrase, each of us are greater and wiser than we appear. <laughs>